He is the host and producer of NBA 2K TV. Uh, we have the pleasure in welcoming Chris Manning onto Hoopsology. How's it going, Chris? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Really, really good. So um, I think one of the goals of this um, podcast um, when we started it was not only just to talk um, NBA every week. Matt and I just do that in our spare time just through text messages, but also to discuss all of basketball culture. Uh, we did a series on sneakerheads, and one of the goals was to also do it on the video game community. Um, it's such a big part of this basketball in, in general, and we really thank you for, for coming on the show. And our experiences, I think Matt will remember this. Um, I'm myself going over to his place and telling him, hey, Andres Nocioni is like awesome in this game i don't mess with the stats i don't do anything at all i haven't touched him he's basically michael jordan in this game he can shoot threes he's dominant he's unstoppable and i, I don't know if you remember this matt uh, playing this um so we've always yeah, had this kind of connection um with this game over the years so it, it always has a kind of a special place in, in our hearts so uh chris uh, the first question we want to ask you specifically is is can you describe your experience, your first experience with just 2K in general, your first times you got your hands on on the game? Man, it's so funny because my mom always used to have my friends come over because I've been diabetic since I was eight years old. So my mom always kind of wanted to have me in her eyesight when I was younger so she could take care of me. So she would invite all my friends over and it was like party time at Debbie's house, right? So it was like all my friends would come over after like basketball practice. This was the time when like, AI was on the cover, everyone was wearing like the answers, you know, my friends would come over and drink sodas and eat all our Slim Jims that my mom would buy. And we would literally play NBA 2K. It was like seventh grade, eighth grade practice for me. And in between all the basketball that I was playing on, even on school nights, we would just have like 10 people over and just taking turns playing 2K. And, uh, you know, I have such fond memories of that because back then it was like on the Dreamcast and, you know, the, the multiplayer was like a thing that was starting to, to hit console gaming. But like playing playing sports games was on another level. So for me, my experience with 2K literally started back at the first game in the series, NBA 2K. And I just have such fond memories of the trash talking and, you know, playing with all my, my, my friends growing up. And I uh, really started with the first game. So it, it's kind of surreal to think back that I've now almost been with the company 10 years in different roles. And it's it's it, it doesn't quite hit me because that's kind of like what the, the same amount of time that I spent as a fan, you know, because I joined during uh, 2K11 uh, with the company. So it's it's cool to think back. You know, it's always been my favorite video game series. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just uh, such an honor to kind of work on the titles now. Can you um, walk us through the creation of NBA um, 2K TV? Just because, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, we see the explosion of these sports. And, and correct me if, if you can correct me if I'm incorrect about this, but I believe this is the only video game with its own dedicated TV show um, every single yeah. week. Um, so yeah, yeah. can you kind of go it's over the not... formation of the show and the concept? Sure. Yeah. So obviously um, back in, I think it was 2015 is when they started it. Uh, NBA 2K TV, it was this really ambitious uh, kind of project by the development team, actually. And uh, I remember, you know, Rachel was the host at the time when it um, first started for, for many seasons. And uh, uh, they have such a great team. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the team before they came over, uh, and worked on the show, they actually worked at other TV networks together, like editors, producers. So they came in and they just kind of were seamless in terms of how they work together and knowing how to produce a television show. Um, they've worked on other networks before. So I had the opportunity to kind of come in uh, periodically through certain segments, usually with esports, and uh, get to work with the teams back in the day when I was working on the publishing side as the community manager. Um, they're they're such a great team. They're they're uh, they know all the the tricks to just being so efficient, uh, which is great when it comes to you know a weekly produced show. Uh, like the day to day work, um, I actually I tell this to a lot of people, but I I actually like the producer side more than actually being in front of a camera in terms of like the I guess the creative um, satisfaction that you get out of it. Uh, to me, being able to to kind of produce the show is 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 more important than like you know being in front of a camera. Uh, I have a lot of friends that kind of ask me they're like, oh, it must be so fun. But the the creative juices kind of get flowing when you get to produce. So uh, like week to week, it's kind of um, 
getting together the segments that we're going to put together, um, you know, coordinating the interviews, uh, making sure that, you know, we're talking to the agents and getting the players ready and, and uh, getting that content, what we're going to ask them prepared. Um, that's really important to me, right, is the, the content creation part of the show. So it's been f- like really fun to be a producer on the show as much as it is to like be in front of the camera which everybody thinks is like the really fun part to me it's more like the content that goes behind it and then being able to talk to the fans right um i really felt that uh prior to, uh, to doing this role when i was the community manager i really felt that i connected to a lot of people as the community manager and and really um loved doing that so this is like that but amplified you know times a million so being able to to talk to fans and make them the stars of the show, that's kind of like the, the goal, the concept that we we came up with. And that's kind of where we took this new direction with 2K TV is really making, you know, the people that are playing the game and doing all these amazing things and making them the stars of the show and making them realize that, you know, if they want to be a content creator, that they can start, you know, somewhere and get amplified. If they're, um, you know, pro a pro player talking to them and picking their brain, talking to some of the best players on the planet. Uh, obviously talking to NBA players and, and getting behind the scenes with that is always fun. And then our just the the com the common goal that everybody has or the common thread is uh, everybody loves NBA 2K, right? So being able to just kind of hit on that little single piece of what brings us all together is I think what makes the show special. You know, you can talk to an NBA player as a blogger, which I've done before, and ask them the questions about basketball that they hear a million times. But as soon as they get to talk NBA 2K, their eyes kind of light up. And I think it it opens them up a lot in terms of the interviews and, and what you can kind of get out of them uh, in terms of that content that, you know, people want to hear. So I think, you know, we always try to make it loose. We always try to make it fun and, uh, you know, show that this is kind of like a special part of basketball. You know, it's kind of infused in basketball culture now. Can you speak to the the unique connection that the NBA has? I mean, we've We've um, we had formerly an author on our show who wrote uh, NBA Jam, the book, which, as as we know, I mean, NBA Jam grew the culture of basketball. I mean, made it a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, he actually you know, played that game in Pakistan and wasn't familiar with the NBA. Uh, and, and I would say it's safe to say, uh, you know, since the early days of 2K, it's, it's kind of taken the reins of that and and being the leading NBA game, can you speak to um, just just how deep that fanhood is growing and, and how many people you guys are reaching? Um, I mean, just, you know, the fact that you guys have a show is incredible for NBA 2K. Yeah, it's an amazing platform. And that's kind of what I look at it, it as is a, a really great platform to, to reach people. Um, for example, one thing we did recently was team up with LeBron and Uninterrupted. And to start talking talking about social justice issues and that was something that's really important to me um you know if one thing i've learned through this crazy year last year is that um if you know you really want to amplify the important messages to people out there and when you look at how much the nba is infused with black culture it was really important to us to be behind the messages of the nba players to to be behind the messages of social justice and to amplify those messages. So to be able to have exclusive uninterrupted content uh, is something that's really special to me and what meant uh, a lot to me as the company stood behind those kind of messages. So I look at, you know, 2K TV is, is a big platform for people, whether it's content creators or fans of 2K or, you know, people that are doing really cool things around 2K. Like around Thanksgiving time, we interviewed a teacher who goes to the alma mater of Anthony Davis. He's a huge Lakers fan. And he was doing, uh, you know, uh, class. He was teaching classes by utilizing the badges in NBA 2K. And I was like, this is like the coolest thing. Like he posted this on Reddit and I reached out immediately to my, my, my guys at Reddit to get in touch with him. Cause I was like, we got to have this on the show. This is amazing. Like you're teaching classes using badges. Like that's such a great concept, you know? And, it obviously clicks with the younger kids that are into basketball and into culture. And right now, you know, with the lockdowns and everything going on with coronavirus, people are at home playing video games. And, you know, a lot of people are out there playing 2K and competing with their friends, connecting with their friends. So it's just a it's just a really special platform to me to be able to to do things like that and amplify messages. Um, so, you know, I always I always look at it as as a as a platform. 
Um, I got a question for you, Chris. Um, to that point, um, I've noticed this through the years, and, and this is something that's really unique to the, to the game itself. Um, actually, um, players, in terms of kind of the, the multiplayer aspect of the game, actually yeah. um, doing... I don't know how to really phrase this other than like protest and just like marches in terms of social justice issues, something that you would never think you would see actually in a video game taking place. Can you kind of walk the viewers and listeners through how that came about in a video game, um, making their voices heard on a, on a digital form besides just, you know, protesting in the streets? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was like, again, you know, having a platform for people, um, it was important for the developers uh, who worked on the game to to implement the Black Lives Matter uh, gear for free when uh, all the, the protesting and, and whatnot was going on. So um, I, I think I saw it on SportsCenter. I was actually just sitting there and one of my friends sent it to me. And, you know, you had, you know, thousands of people getting together in NBA 2K wearing the, the, the Black Lives Matter shirts and the hoodies and stuff and, and going out there and, you know, <laughs> kneeling and, and protesting in the virtual video game. And that was kind of like really special to me because it, again, you know, amplifying that message was so important to us, especially on 2K TV. And then you see stuff like that. Um, another example of like the community coming together on stuff like that was, you know, with Kobe's passing, you saw a lot of fans get together uh, and wear Kobe gear and Lakers gear and, and just kind of um, have a way to kind of mourn his loss, you know, virtually. And right now when we can't get together with our friends, um, it's important for people to connect to people just for mental health. So having an outlet to do that via NBA 2K is a special thing for sure. Um, Chris, can you go over um... – it seems like when, especially when I started playing 2K heavily and, and kind of uh, disregarding my other responsibilities as a human being, um, the, the the first game that caught my eye was I actually the, the game that is behind you, um, NBA 2K11 with Michael Jordan, and how specific it was to his career and how in depth it was and how you kind of continue that theme um, through several of your games moving forward. Um, can you kind of walk us through how that concept was created? Because that does just seem pretty in depth because prior to that, Michael Jordan was known not to be the most friendliest with video games. So how was it that it went from him not really appearing in video games really at all to all of a sudden you're playing through the, symptom, the, the most pivotal moments of his entire career? Yeah, I mean, 2K has always thrived on basketball authenticity. And I think at the end of the day, that's like the centerpiece to everything that we do. So that involves so much with basketball culture. And of course, Michael Jordan, the greatest of all time. Um, you know, I joined during 2K11. So I remember as a fan uh, when he got announced as the cover athlete, then of course the Jordan moments that everybody remembers. Um, I remember sitting there with my dad and my dad just, typically never really cared about video games but playing those jordan moments he was sitting down being like i remember that oh i remember that game oh like here's the roster of the boston celtics and the los angeles lakers and you know oh wow that jordan moments in there i remember the shrug you know and it's it was cool because it was like I, here's my dad who never cared for video games like literally never cared for them sitting down with me and watching me play through the jordan moments and i remember that like in my head so you know, the one thing I'll say about 2K um, is that we, we always try to hit on basketball authenticity and, you know, we want to involve all the great players. Um, just working on so many campaigns, not only with Jordan, but Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kobe, um, all these all time great players is just uh, it's been it's a really special product, you know, and I think like now you, you talk about stuff like just cover reveals and how big of a deal that is for people and the debate around it, and you know, the conversations around it. It's just so it's it's so fun, you know, to be around that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think I, I think with with MJ, it's been it's been great to, to have uh, him involved with NBA 2K for so long. And just ha again, you know, I think it just all stems from that core concept of being the most authentic basketball experience out there um, is really important to the company. Chris, can you speak to how, you know, you, you talk about this connection with the fans and everything that you guys have through the show. Uh, can you talk us through, you know, maybe some things that you've heard from the fans, like someone say uh, born maybe in the late nineties or so they didn't uh, watch Jordan growing up. Like, uh, like Justin and I certainly did. Um, can, can you speak to how the game is involved in, in kind of deepening that fanhood 
Um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier before we got started about The Last Dance and how that kind of brought in a new generation of Jordan fans. Uh, can you talk about how 2K does the same thing and maybe even uh, more impactfully so, because you're now getting to hit, you know, the six three-pointers in the game against the Trailblazers as Jordan. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it was Mark Cuban a couple of years ago that was talking about how this younger generation that never got to see these players play are are literally learning through NBA 2K. Um, if you look at like the My Team audience, for example, uh, they will tell you every stat about every card that comes out. They'll break it down on YouTube. They'll analyze it. Uh, they'll call some cards trash. They'll call some cards the goat. But the, the bottom line is they they study every tendency about every kind of thing that comes out on these cards and they learn about these players, you know, from a, from a general perspective, they'll, they'll learn about how Wilt Chamberlain played, even though there's a lot of fans today that never got to see him play. They'll learn about how magic uh, played, how, you know, how Kobe used to play um, players from all, really every era are, are featured in the game. And, and we're always trying to get as many as possible, right? We want to work with as many retired players as possible. So, it's it's really um, an interesting thing because you know while in real life you can't put the 2000 you know 16 Warriors against the 2020 Lakers you know you can in NBA 2K or if you want to see how Jordan's you know Bulls would have fared against you know Kobe and Shaq in that 2001 squad that uh, three peated you can in NBA 2K so it's it's it kind of does two things. It allows to be uh, an educational platform for younger audiences and kids that are playing the game. And it also, you can relive memories as an adult, you know, with your favorite players um, throughout all the eras. So I think it provides a really interesting perspective on basketball and basketball history. And I know for a fact, like just talking to certain friends, like uh, someone from my high school, hit me up and their seven-year-old plays the game. And she was like, I, you know, I grew up with Chris. I went to high school with Chris and he's like, you're a liar. You don't know Chris, you know, he's like, you're, you're kidding with me. So I sent like a little video message to, you know, to her kid. Uh, Cause she hit me up on Facebook and he was just like ecstatic. And I remember talking to him and I said, who's your favorite player? You know? And he said, Kobe, you know, and he said, I, I didn't get to see Kobe play, but I get to play as him in NBA 2K. And it's, it's stuff like that that I think is really special uh, when it comes to our game um, for like the younger audiences, you know, um, there's a lot of people that maybe, um, especially with YouTube now can go and research more about basketball. When I was in high school, I used to order VHS tapes and get like uh, Showtime Lakers on VHS and literally collect them and watch them and like study the game. Cause again, I'm a basketball nut, um, but I loved learning about the players that came before and uh, just reliving these stories that you read about in books. Um, I, I love reading about the history of basketball and just watching the history of basketball. So I think NBA 2K provides uh, another look at um, how these players played, how they how they looked, how they uh, what their style was. And uh, you can really mix and match however you want within the game. If you want to play uh, with only historic players in, in my league, you can do that. You know, if you want to play with these historic players and in, in my team and create the, the greatest team of all time, you can do that. And uh, I think that's where NBA 2K uh, really is special when you look at it in terms of basketball history. Um, Chris, can you discuss from a commentary standpoint, um, I noticed uh, recently you've had incorporated um, inside the NBA from TNT, those guys doing kind of the, the pregame show, and then you've had a multiple um, rotating cast of commentators. I think even uh, Bill Simmons was on there, mm -hmm. I believe, um, yeah. and just other commentators. When they're actually recording the audio for the game, uh, what is the most surprising thing that they notice when stepping into the booth that that you've observed? Yeah, so I actually got to do uh, one audio session. Uh, I think it was for NBA 2K. Uh, I want to say it was for 20. And uh, it was with uh, Bill Simmons, who we had on 2K TV, and Kevin Harlan. And the one thing that I, I personally saw um, was how, how natural everything was, right? Uh, talking to to Kevin Harlan I remember he told me he's like there's nothing different between stepping into an NBA arena and stepping in with the recording team at 2K because everything's the same you know it's that level of professionalism and 
they just do their thing. And uh, as a fan, I was freaking out because I'm like a huge mm-hmm. Kevin Harlan fan, but you know, yeah, I, have exactly. to, I have to act all cool and, you know, not, <laughs> not be a fan. But like, it was so great uh, seeing them in their, you know, in their comfort zone and, and doing their thing that, you know, we have loved as fans for so long. So I think that's the, again, you know, I always, I always say this, but uh, the core thing about NBA 2K is basketball authenticity, right? So, uh, you know, people uh, always, I think, appreciate stuff like that and having the guest commentators, uh, even expanding it uh, this year and having so many more um, has just been like such a cool thing to hear in the game when you're playing and hearing these stories and stuff, for sure. It's one of my favorite things, you know, when you're playing the game and, you know, Kevin Garnett comes through or Kobe Bryant, you know, Mm -hmm. comes through and tells his stories like it's amazing. It's really, really awesome. That's high praise. Where you say there that uh, you know Kevin Harlan tells you guys there's there's no difference between the two. Um, so just just kind of along the lines of, of personally for you when when you're playing 2K, okay, what what is kind of your style going in? Do you like to play with? I, I mean, I know obviously we all like a bit of this and that, a bit of everything. But um, you know, do you like kind of playing as like the bigger centers, like the you know Lakers Shack? Um, do you like playing more of the speedy guards, AI crossover type thing? What, what is kind of the style you personally go for? Well, it's funny because I get a lot of uh, trash talking from like the isolation community. But when I've played oh. against other people and like have streamed it and stuff, people see that I love isoing. I love scoring on people. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a um, I'd say my style is a bit different from. The kids today, the kids today are a lot of run and gun and want to try to cross you up and will try to make you look stupid where I think I have like a higher IQ when it comes to playing uh, (laughs) NBA 2K. I like to kind of break you down with jab steps and make you think about how I'm going to attack you. And uh, my approach is like attack, 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 but be versatile about it. You won't catch me doing like the same two moves like a lot of other players do. So um, I like I like playing all kinds of ways, posting up and kind of breaking you down that way, uh, attacking you from the perimeter. Uh, when I played in college, like I definitely would use jab steps and more of my IQ than, you know, I obviously didn't get blessed with a big, strong body. So it was like up fakes and making you jump in the air and making defenders bite. Uh, learning footwork was something that I was big into. So uh, I think like the nice thing about 2K is you can pick it up casually and play, then you can really get deep into learning the intricacies of it. Um, so my atta- my attack style is uh, total Mamba mentality. Like I-, I will attack you, I will go at your throat. And I'm super hyper competitive. People don't know this about me. Um, that's sometimes why I don't streak a lot is because I'm going to drop a lot of obscenities. <laughs> so it's like I got to kind of cool it down and like, you know, but I go out there with my squad uh, almost, I would say almost every night. And uh, we like to go out there and uh, just, just run program, run rec, stuff like that and uh, play five on five. I love playing the, the team ball. It's a lot of fun to me. I used to be like a big head to head player, but I love playing with my boys like, now we go out there and, you know, love running fives and just having a good time out there. Um, speaking of, like, the, the gaming community, I want to get your opinion on the 2K Gaming League, um, mm-hmm. just because there's been an explosion of esports, especially this year with the pandemic. Can mm-hmm. you tell the difference or explain the difference between the 2K Gaming League and other gaming leagues, like, like for instance, like an EVO fighting tournament or a League of Legends um, just because with 2K, there are particular teams, um, that I believe, uh, participants get drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, and where do you see the future of this going? Just because the NBA is so involved with this league. Um, they, they are yeah. really, really active in the, the, the well-being of the future of this league. So can you kind of walk us through, because we're not totally hip with esports so much, as to what is kind of the, the overall kind of, I guess, end goal of this league and how it's incorporated with what we see with the NBA on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, the, the great thing was I remember trying to build up esports with NBA 2K for um, pretty much my whole entire tenure. Um, it started with 2K 14. I felt that the game was ready. Uh, did some stuff with MLG called the tournament. Uh, found out that I really love broadcasting, which I, you know, I did, a, I dabbled in a little bit of broadcasting in college, not much, but uh, love doing esports and NBA 2K broadcasting, but uh, we uh, we were really excited to see like the NBA get so involved right off the bat, right? So now you're getting drafted by NBA organizations. 
Um, they have their own kind of uh, set of rules uh, with how the league operates. And just seeing how it's changed the lives of so many people, there's a lot of money in the tournaments that they play, and it really keeps it hyper-competitive. These are, these are players that um, not only do they have just a really deep understanding of NBA 2K, um, but these guys know the, the insides and outs of the game uh, sometimes, you know, beyond what we even perceived or could could foresee you know players doing with our game so it, it's great to see such a, a dedicated level um from not only these talented players that are able to make the league but also the nba itself in in these leagues i think the future really um is going to depend on um diversifying a lot of the way that they do compete um we, we have the you know the leagues it's going international um that was one thing that's super important you know the more players you get involved in teams the more sponsors you get involved and that's always a good thing because you have that flow of revenue coming in which means bigger prize pools um i'd like to see like a, a tournament crowdfunded by by players that would be cool you know i could only imagine how big that prize pot would be um i also think it's important for like the 2k side itself to to run more tournaments like pro-am tournaments like they they did back in the day right now they're doing such a great job with like the my team stuff um, but I think it's cool for the teams that are either trying to make the league or these players to like pair up and, and be considered, you know, amateurs uh, to compete on that 5v5 level uh, for sure. So, you know, I've been pushing for 2K to do another prime tournament, which I think would be a lot of a, a really great fun for these players that maybe haven't made the league to, to play for a big prize pot. So um, I think, you know, as esports continues to develop and grow, um, 2K's very invested in, in all avenues of that. And it's just really cool to see a league now where players are getting drafted into organizations. You know, to me, that was like something that I didn't see coming so soon, um, to be honest. So uh, it's just it's just a lot of fun to see. And, um, you know, I love covering that kind of stuff on 2K TV and helping amplify the league and, and kind of um, showcasing to um, all these players, these millions of people that play 2K watch 2k tv you know the best in the world are, are definitely on a different level and i will say i i take a lot of pride in my 2k skills i've played against some of the best pro players and these guys are on another damn level man like it, it's not it's not an illusion like these guys will destroy people and uh they are they are very talented at the game so i i just want to throw that caveat out there sure. i'm going to give our, our <laughs> players a shout out here because there's some extremely talented players and, and the funny thing about the 2k community is everybody thinks they're better than the next person and i've seen a lot of trash talk towards pro players 95 percent of people maybe 98 percent of people would not stand a chance against these pro players they are on another level i've i've seen it firsthand it's it's not pretty <laughs> In terms of getting involved from that, you know, the, these people that think they can actually hang with these pro players, um, I, what, what comes to my mind is just like with, because my, my brother, he's active more in like the Smash Brothers community. He's actually sure. participated in some gaming tournaments here in town. And I noticed with the fighting community, from what he's told me, it's more of an in-person type of experience. With 2K, is it more online based than in person, per se, getting together with tournaments? If so, if somebody wants to at least test their medal online, just actually going through kind of the 2K um, sponsored tournaments would probably be the most appropriate, successful way of getting involved, as opposed to just playing local tournaments in their hometown. Would, would that be accurate? Well, I mean, you know normally no and yes is the answer okay. uh because of coronavirus you know obviously it's really tough to organize events right now you, you can't right now sure. uh, especially with how uh dangerous it is in the united states uh that being said in normal times and you know hopefully we get back to that by the end of the year this year um you know the, the 2k league was doing such a fantastic job organizing these events they just built a new studio that, that they didn't get to use this past year because of coronavirus um it's it looks amazing i've seen pictures and video of it it's, it's stunning and just being at the event being at the finals of season two um being there live and watching that crowd and watching the energy it's like yeah it's like it was such an amazing experience just being a fan you know uh, i think a lot of people misconstrue like oh they work at 2k they don't care 
they're you know they're just off doing their thing it's like nah like i'm i'm either playing the game my wife wants to kill me half the time i'm either playing the game all the time or i'm yelling and throwing my controller or uh you know i'm watching the 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 2k league um before i came back to 2k tv you know i I was talking to some teams about potentially joining uh it didn't work out that's cool other people had opportunities to go and do great things the league but I am so happy I'm back with 2K TV to be able to amplify all the esports stuff too. You know, it's it's important to us. So we'll continue to cover, you know, the big events and stuff. But to answer your question, um, yeah, I think they've done a great job of hosting more stuff. You know, they were doing the the Winter Clash, which uh, saw 2v2, 3v3, um, uh, WNBA players involved, pro players involved, celebrities, um, uh, influencers. So they're doing all kinds of stuff on the side um, that, that, you know, the 2K League specifically runs. And they do a good job of really um, involving people. And, and shout out to Black Frank White, who's their community guy. Um, he's He's been so fantastic with that stuff. And uh, we'll actually have him on at 2K TV, I think, in the next episode, actually. So I'll have a conversation with him. And we're always catching up with the 2K League and kind of showcasing the latest. So um, they've done a good job of bringing people together, even during the coronavirus and, uh, being able to compete for prize pots and, and, you know, uh, trying to do new things with the 2K league, which is exciting, you know, keeping it fresh. Awesome. Uh, taking things, uh, kind of, uh, a very different direction from where you're going there. I just out of curiosity, I wanted to get your thoughts on how, and this was, this was always my favorite game mode and maybe I'll get trashed for saying this, but. I've always really, really loved the My Career mode on NBA 2K. Can you talk about how that has developed over time? Because, um, you know, it, it seemed like it's it's really become intricate. I, I watched some of the interviews that you had with some of uh, the actors that have been involved in that, like ATM, for example. Uh, can you just talk about how that particular game mode has has grown and developed over the years? It's so crazy because I remember back with 2K14 when uh, I was told that we we're going to do this these stories every year. And I'm just like thinking like, that's crazy. Like that's so much work, you know, just to, to do that annually. Uh, and then like over time, you've seen all these amazing actors and actresses get involved. You know, we've had Rosario Dawson. We've had uh, just, just so many people. Spike Lee, you know, direct wow. in my career mode. Um you you could go down the list and look at all the you know the people that I've been involved, but uh, I think really what it what it comes down to that's special about it is uh, how many people just love to get involved with NBA 2K right? It's kind of a part of basketball culture now, and that's something that I'm really appreciative of. of. And uh, we have an amazing uh, team of developers that are just you know they're already working on you know the next year's mode and. Um, it's, it's just so crazy to see the dedication from the different teams and like setting up those shoots. And obviously, you know, it's been a big struggle with Corona the last year. So like shout out to all developers across the video game community. Cause it's like people are working from home and having to communicate and do these things. You know, I know that since pretty much February, I've been quarantining here and working from home and shooting everything from home. And we have pretty much a production set in our living room. So it's it's a lot of adapting. And uh, as with anything, um, our, our teams of developers are just so amazing. And, and shout out to everybody on our My Career team. Um, they're, they're, they're always doing stuff that's just like so cool uh, to bring these experiences year in and year out. Because, you know, My Career is the most played mode in the game. So um, you know, for everyone, it kind of starts with that, you know, hoop dream of making the NBA. And maybe you can't make the NBA, but how can you live that for yourself? Well, NBA 2K allows that, you know. I know that I love going and playing with Anthony Davis and LeBron James and winning the ring alongside them. You know, it's it's just a fun experience. And it's something that I think um, every basketball fan has aspirations of, of doing something like that. And NBA 2K allows you to really live that fantasy and live that dream, you know, cause only, you know, when you think about all the people that make the NBA in the entire world, you're talking way, way less than 1% of people. So, you know, now you get to live that dream, live that fantasy and all these different experiences. And it's been fun to watch like fan feedback over the years too, to, to see what they really want to see and to kind of, you know, tune my career into something that the fans really kind of come to expect to play and uh, really kind of hit on all those, those points of what they've, 
wanted to to do in it. So um, yeah, our developers have been amazing and just meeting and talking to like some of these actors, you see how excited they are, you know, just to be involved in talking to the director, Chris, of, of all these my careers, it's, you see the passion behind everybody's, you know, in, in terms of their roles and how they're involved with 2K. And that's something that I just love about the dev side. Not enough people see that as how passionate their teams are, you know. Developers always uh, have a thankless job in this industry. And uh, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't like people that shared my same passion for basketball, you know. It's just people love what they do here. And there's there's so much talent across the board, so. Awesome. You uh, mentioned the pandemic, and when there was no sports being shown, um, it was 2K being front and center uh, on ESPN. And I wanted to ask you, did you experience, did you see any kind of a spike with newer players experiencing NBA um, 2K for the first time? And, and then once, it, hopefully, when things get back to normal, do you see a bigger install base moving forward for future games? Just because, you know, you, you said earlier, people are playing video games more because it's really nothing else to do. Um, do you see this period as kind of as a, a little bit of a blessing in disguise in terms of future games and growing the community? Um. I wouldn't call it a blessing in disguise because obviously, first off, like thoughts go out to everybody sure. by coronavirus. I, you know, my family has been affected by coronavirus. My sister is battling it on the front lines. My cousin's a nurse working in San Diego in the ICU and, you know, she's having to make decisions of where to put bodies. And Excessive. my cousin is, is uh, she shouldn't be dealing with that in her sure. late 20s. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just tough right now. And I've, I've tweeted this out a million times, but like, you never know what the next person's going through in terms of their life. And obviously a shout out to everybody involved in, sure. you know, the healthcare, all the frontline workers. Um, that being said, um, fortunately, one uh, industry that's been doing really well is video games because people are at home, unfortunately, you know, and I say this all the time. Um, mental health is so important for everybody out there. And I think one thing that uh, video games is special in, especially in times like this, is I miss, you know, my friends. I miss going to the movies. I miss going out to eat. Like, just having a little bit of an outlet or away from your day-to-day. -day. Right now, everything's kind of the same for a lot of people day-to-day. -day. So, fortunately, video games can bring us together. And just even for my own mental health, it's great to hop in and talk to, you know, my friend Bro and Josh and 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 my native and, and like all my guys, you know, and we get in parties and we watch movies together and we play 2K together and we play games. And that's been uh, a really great outlet for all of us. Um, so I hope people out there um, are finding, you know, 2K to be an outlet for them during this tough time. Uh, obviously, our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who's affected by the virus, uh, and it's everywhere in the United States right now, unfortunately. So as things, I think, will continue um, to start to get better, I think, pretty soon here with the vaccines hitting and stuff, I think it's, uh, you know, again, it's important to have good mental health. And I think uh, video games can definitely do that, bring people together in a special way. Um, for us, you know, uh, we, we've seen, yeah, you know, pe more people are at home, more people are playing. So you know, it was important for especially 2K TV. Um, we didn't miss a week. Um, you know, a lot of shows kind of hit a reset button and said, how are we going to do this? And took a little time off. We uh, we immediately went to home and uh, there was a shelter in place pretty early in, in uh, San Francisco. So we had to adapt immediately uh, to the virus and um, we got equipment out to, to everybody. Um, and shout out to our entire team because it was not an easy process. Um, you know, we also shoot in 4K. So for people that don't know, it's it's not only shooting, but organizing the files and sending them to our editors and making sure they get that on a weekly basis is a tough thing. So we we had to adapt in a lot of different ways, but we kept rolling through the pandemic. And, and one thing that was important to myself and the company and uh, upper management was, uh, you know, we want to be there for fans and to provide some form of entertainment to fans during these really insane tough times you know and we're proud of the fact that we've had 2k tv content roll from the beginning of last year all the way to this date really just roll through uh even during the off season you know and be there and uh be able to provide a form of entertainment for fans was really important to us and um i appreciate that uh people allowed us to be 
inside their homes on a week to week basis and we're watching the show and you know millions of people it's like sometimes it's surreal to think about you know but um i'm very grateful for that and i was proud of the company for uh making sure that we didn't just say all right well we got to figure this out it's like now we're gonna we're gonna continue going all the way through so it was important to us to do that and i'm i'm really proud of the team to be able to do something like that given the circumstances well, I guess I misspoke in terms I, – I guess what I meant was more yeah. a blessing in disguise in terms of everybody not having anything to do in terms of yeah, yeah, like entertainment sure. options just like being so limited, being at home. Um, the coronavirus, is, it's devastating. It, it's terrible. And um, hopefully we're on the path of um, recovery soon. But sure. I, I guess during that down period, there is there is no outlet for entertainment. We're left with the last dance. And right. um, all of a sudden, you know, 2K was that – um, entertainment options, seeing you know major NBA players um, playing these playing these games and seeing these commentators kind of a little bit confused in terms of how to call certain things and watching horse and etc. So I think that was um, really cool to see kind of video games on the forefront as otherwise it's kind of ignored by the mainstream media per se. Um, it was it was cool to, to see that during this time. Um, Chris, I want to ask you another thing, and that's with the WNBA as well. Um, that's something that I've always been curious about in terms of when are they going to get their uh, – speaking of, <laughs> right on. I, I need to get one of those sweatshirts, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. Can you kind of walk, walk us through the introduction of the WNBA, like – what was the process of getting them included in the game and what's their future in terms of, are they going to have their own game? Are they going to just be involved in NBA 2K? Are they going to get a, my career mode? Are they going to get the modes that the, um, the NBA counterparts have? What is exactly their future in, in terms of 2K? Well, I will say uh, I was always an advocate of bringing in the women, bringing in the WNBA. And again, when you talk about, you know, being authentic to the game of basketball, the WNBA is a big part of that. And basketball authenticity, WNBA is a big part of it. And I think one thing that's so special is uh, we didn't just add in the roster of women and call it a day. You know, I think when you play the WNBA mode, uh, which was introduced last year in NBA 2K20, you'll see that it plays very um it plays in a way that's authentic to the way that women play. And that was something that was so cool and so crazy to see how how well our developers paid attention to the game of the WNBA. Um, obviously, it's expanded more. Um, you know, we have the W mode now. You can take them online. It's just like a sick arena. I, I think it's one of the best arena, uh, best looking gyms in our game. Period. When you play the W mode this year, obviously you can uh, you know you, you can create a WNBA player, my player this year. Uh, you're gonna see stuff like that expanded in the future for sure. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to see women out there in the city. You know, I was, I, you know, that's something that I've been advocating for since I knew that we were going to implement the WNBA and I wish it would have been sooner, but I'm really proud of the teams to, to get the game of basketball. Cause I, I just think there's a lot of younger people that look up to it. And we've seen, um, this kind of trend in culture to kind of find these heroes and women that we can look, uh, up into, you know, and, and really look, uh, when you look at the younger generation of people, like we were talking about learning about basketball history and these, these men that have played the game, also the women, you know, and uh, it's, it's pretty awesome that we now have something that, that younger kids and, and younger girls can look forward to. And even if it sparks a dream, an idea in their head now that can grow into some special things for the future generations, you know, and I think um, when you look at how involved like Kobe was in the game, of basketball but his attention to detail and his desire to grow the WNBA and the women's brand of basketball I think is was really special to him so I think you know allowing the WNBA to be such a big part of NBA 2k as a whole I think again comes back down to basketball authenticity and I think you're going to see a lot more in the future with that for sure and uh uh, you know, I'll be right there uh, screaming in our developers' ears to do more and more, more. So um, I'm proud of the teams and how they've implemented it and really been authentic to um, not only the women that play, but just, again, the, the future generations of people that now can play our product and play as men or women or live their careers out or their desires on how they want to play the game of basketball. It's just a really, really awesome thing. And I'm 100% behind everything. Also, uh, one more thing to that, uh, sure. the way that they handled the social justice issues, um, you know, 
it's it's important to amplify those messages, but it's also important to recognize how important um, not only the NBA has handled all those issues, but the, the WNBA as well. I mean, we need to really applaud the efforts of these players um, in in what they've been able to to do, say, act you know activate on, uh, be activists for, and then also amplify those messages. It's been it's been really powerful and good for the country. For sure. It's something that Matt and I have covered in depth um, over the summer in particular about the, the WNBA's in, involvement of the of the social justice movement, just because, you know, they're on the forefront when the NBA wasn't really addressing it. They mm -hmm. were the first ones that were on those front lines. So it's good to see them get the credit for sure. One more before I let you go, Chris, and my buddy Kurt would kill me if I didn't ask you this because <laughs> he's been playing the college game, um, mm -hmm. college basketball, I think since I think 2K7. And so, like, he created, like, a bunch of our buddies from high school in the game. And I've noticed that there's been slowly some, like, um, baby steps towards incorporating kind of the college game. And I won't ask you in terms of licensing. I mean, we already know the answer to that. But I just want to, I guess, I guess as best I can to ask this question, what's kind of the, the future of involving, like, college without involving, like, getting into the licensing mess? So I've noticed there's been some flirtation in terms of getting more involved with high school, college, but not in terms of getting like the licensed players in there. And I, I just want to ask, is there any future plans in terms of involving college more, but kind of, I guess, circumventing, creating a, another college basketball game, but still involving just the, the institutions? Enjoying the content we're putting out on 2K TV, and uh, we got some really cool things planned this year, and I, you know, can't wait to continue sharing this this journey with you all. Well, Chris, thank you very much for joining the show. This is an interview that Matt and I have been truly looking forward to. Truly appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me on. We'll we'll do it again someday. Awesome, absolutely.